When's the last time you used a typewriter? The experience is something a computer keyboard just can't quite recreate. There is a whole community of typewriter enthusiasts here in the Bay Area. And Fox 13's photojournalist Barry Wong introduces us to a Sarasota man breathing new life into the classic machine. These things have so much character. It has a voice. They are one of a kind. It's like a constant back and forth. Typewriters have a soul. I just had an inner voice tell me to buy them and fix them. This is called the plate, and when you move that, these little rollers have to move with it. 2016, I started to collect them. I have over 300. See the one on the right turning? I repair them for love. I repair them to make them right again. I repair them to hear their bell go off. I repair them to see them work because they're built to be working. I started to think about how this thing could be useful to people, and I realized that it was a memory machine. Well, it just brings back such wonderful memories. You remember things while you're typing that you didn't necessarily remember any other way. Well, it's the actual physical experience and hearing the typing, the click, click, click. You know, these machines talk back to you, kind of. I would like to see every retirement home have typewriters in there. Why shouldn't they be in there? These people can then type their memoirs and take it with them, and it'll always be there. We get typewriters in with stories attached to them, and it's always fascinating. This belonged to the rear admiral of the Coast Guard for the entire area. His name was James Crake, and he won a major medal. He was a hero in the 50s in New Orleans. He helped evacuate 12,000 people, and this is his typewriter. When this came in, it came in with these papers in here. Dearest editor, we are looking for a daughter that was taken from her family due to unpreventable reasons. They started to type the letter that they had written. And I often get personal notes like this in the typewriters, and I, my tendency is to leave them with the typewriter. I want them to use it in memory care, where they type what happened to them each day, and then they read it the next day. The first time I took one in to a friend's mother who was suffering from severe uh, Alzheimer's, I saw a miracle. We all saw it. A woman who was barely able to communicate, as soon as the typist position, as soon as I opened that typewriter, her, her eyes lit up. It was like recognition. I know this. I, this is a friend of mine. And she was able to communicate yes or no when she wasn't able to do it before. And that told me this is valuable. There is a connection there that I can't quite understand, but I can marvel at. This is good stuff, isn't it? I could listen to the sound of the typewriter all night. Back in the big 13 days, this entire building was full of manual typewriters, and it was just loud in here. Gosh, and that's tough, because you have to be so deliberate about what you type. There's no Ex backspace. Exactly. <laughs> you have to know exactly what you're saying. And, and Kevin, I think Andy Hardy had his back there, and I think he might have been a two-finger typist. He, he was the two-finger typist <laughs> when, we, when we first started. It bring back uh, just haunting memories of yeah. having to do that. But uh, Haley, uh, you didn't have backspace, but you just had X. And you just exit yeah, out. Yeah, exit out. So you'd have a lot of black marks all, all over your script. But, uh, oh, God, that was scary, wasn't it?